Thank you for coming back to watch the technical side to this old goods lift. If you've not seen it, please consider watching the previous video by clicking the link above or see the video description. After the intro, let's get straight on with what the relays do, what's this cable that goes up and around the motor room, the significance of this switch, where the lift actually travels to, and this is the motor, but where is the brake? This is a direction switch, which is only connected to the middle floor call button. Direction logic is quite obvious for the top and bottom floors. The lift must always travel up to reach the top floor and always come down to reach the bottom floor. But the middle floor requires some logic. When you press the call button, how does the system know which direction to send the lift? Is it coming down or coming up? The decision is made by this roller switch. The lift moves it to the left when it passes it in the down direction and pushes it to the right when going up. Therefore, when the switch is left, the lift comes up to reach the middle floor. If the switch is right, then the lift must be above the first floor. The lift travels down to reach the call. The first floor call button does nothing if the lift is already at the first floor. This being a very simple goods lift, the roller switch on the doors probably initiates the stop at the floor. This also releases the landing door locking mechanism. NT means nominal time. A capacitor keeps this relay on for a couple of seconds after the lift has arrived. During this couple of seconds, the landing call buttons are disconnected. This gives passengers long enough to open the lift gates before the lift can be called from another floor. Maybe this was the basement. This is the safety gear rope that pulls on the brake on the lift car. If the car breaks away from the counterweight, safety brake under the lift car is what this cable is all about. One end is attached to the brake on the lift car. The other end is attached to the counterweight. The cable moves up and down with the lift and nothing ever happens other than this. However, if the main cables should fail, This was explained in great detail in a separate video called Mr. Matt and Mr. Che Safety Brake. 1F, 2F and TF are call relays. This lift can only respond to one call at a time. When the orange in use lamp is lit, the lift cannot be called to a different floor other than the one it's travelling to. These are the high current contactors that control the motor. One is for up and the other down, meaning this is a one speed lift. Behind are three transformers. They provide lower voltages for the relays, call lamps, and I was going to say the brake, but where is the brake? When a lift is stationary, there is normally a brake which stops the motor from turning. Here it is on this old Evans lift. All lifts have one, but it appears to be missing on this motor. So perhaps this goods lift doesn't need one. 
Thanks to Pete Lomas, who is an ex-Express Lifts and Otis engineer. He provided the answer. But to see it, we need to look under this cover. But unfortunately, I didn't know this at the time of filming. Luckily, the motor that runs this dumb waiter in this abandoned hotel is exactly the same as the one at Hilton Park. It's the same motor with a few parts removed. On the right is the worm drive that would normally turn the crown wheel that moves the ropes to move the lift up and down. On the left hand side is the brake. This part rotates with the motor, but it cannot do so because it's usually in contact with this static part that's part of the motor housing. Both these parts form the brake. The motor cannot turn when these two parts are together. For the brake to release, Power is applied internally to an electromagnet and the rotating part moves backwards very slightly to form a gap, just a millimeter, but it's been exaggerated in this animation. The motor can now spin freely. The brake springs back into the engaged position as soon as power is removed from the motor. The brake is very small and nothing like the ones on normal lifts, but it was considered good enough for a slow moving goods lift. My floor plan shows the goods lift directly in line with the bridge that goes across to the other side of the motorway. Coming back across the bridge towards the tower means the goods lift must be behind this wall. But there is a lower level, which is the loading bay. It would make a lot more sense for the lift to travel down here, so that deliveries can be moved from a lorry directly into the stockroom via the goods lift. But I don't think so. Yes, there are three landings, but the lift cannot go to the loading bay because it doesn't physically line up with it. I'm going to have to turn the map upside down so that it matches the direction that we're walking in. This is one of the routes down to the loading bay. Please bear in mind that we are now under the tower on the map. The building support pillars come all the way down here, so this makes it easy to pinpoint our location. But you'll notice that we are now quite far away and I wasn't able to find any entrance that may lead to it from down here in the loading bay. The only prominent goods entrance is here. But the tower, shown in red, is only one part of the motorway services. The ground floor public area, shown in blue, supersedes the tower. Therefore, the goods entrance is still in use and supplies the ground floor. But you'll notice that the single goods lift is still quite some distance away. So if the small goods lift doesn't go down to the loading bay, where does it go? There are three floor relays. This means it serves three levels, but if you look at the door release rollers, you'll see that the stockroom doors are not level with the tower doors on the other side. And if you look at the floor, the level of the stockroom is about half a meter higher than the floor of the tower. This created two separate levels, with only three floor relays. 2F is the stockroom, 1F is the tower, which is only half a meter lower on the other side. Now the clincher. Look at the position of the counterweight. It's at the top of the shaft, meaning the lift is at its lowest point in the shaft. Here is the view from the ground, and I'm 99% sure that the shaft doesn't drop down to this distance. The summary is, this goods lift probably only travels down to here, 
To bring things from the loading bay into the stockroom, you first had to use the main service lifts up to the first floor, then bring them around in a trolley to the other small service lift. These are some clips from the other lift machine room on the roof. The main passenger lifts and two goods lifts also date back to when the tower was built in the late 1960s. The goods lifts are positioned directly behind the passenger lifts, which is very easy to see up here. But on the floors below, the goods lifts are behind locked doors. The passenger lifts feature this classic carriage floor selector, which represents the lift's position in the shaft. It's all relays and mechanics, and it's a journey back to the 1960s. To see it, please click the link above, or see the video description. And if that's not enough, then 120 miles north from Hilton Park, you'll find Lancaster Services, with another derelict tower, although much taller. This too has an array of old lifts, all of which can be watched on the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel. A lot of time and effort goes into filming and editing these videos for you, my audience. Quality, not quantity, is our motto. If you've enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing. For the other videos mentioned, please see the video description. Thank you very much for watching.